listeners, welcome to another episode of the Snowy's Camping Show. If you've just joined us, maybe the first time you tuned in, or if you have seen us before and you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to our channel either via YouTube or your favorite podcast app so you don't miss out on all our future awesome episodes. Today, or you, before I go any further, you're joined as usual by Lauren, my colleague here, and myself, Ben. And today we're talking about a topic that's been requested a fair bit. Apparently, has, a lot of yeah. people have asked, mm-hmm. and, and it's a tents versus swags. And we've kind of thrown a bit of rooftop tent in there as well to yeah. sort of say, um, I guess the general overview on what what's the difference is is one better than the other. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a few things to consider. I think they're all good in their own way. Yeah, but. Um, it's certainly an interesting topic to talk about. I guess we're probably going to have a fair bit of our own opinions in there yeah. on this one, and it very much depends on how you're travelling and who you're travelling with, I think, as to what you're going to take. So, I think admittedly, though, a lot of people have one of all of them. I was going well, to say, rooftop I've, tents are less popular. Yeah, it's an expensive. But everyone seems to have a combination of swags or tents or if whatever. You, if you've camped on a semi-regular basis, then yeah. you've probably got a swag mm-hmm. and a tent. I actually take both most of the time because I put – my, my swag is also my my bed in the tent. So it's yeah, got my right. mat and bedding yep. and everything in there. So if I'm not sleeping in the open, which I don't do so much more now with kids, mm-hmm. it goes in the tent with the mat in it and that yep. canvas outer kind of gives the self-inflating mat a protection from yep. punctures and that sort of thing. So well, Do you sleep on the swag or do you still sleep under the canvas? Uh, well, under the canvas, yeah. But the canvas also offers a really extra, like a layer of warmth. Yeah, yeah, of course. So it, it usually we zip it down, yeah, and it's not on top of us. But if mm. it is a really cold night, then the canvas comes up over the top of us as yeah. well, and it creates extra warmth. So mm. I guess I take both with me wherever I go. Yeah, yeah, cool, <laughs> so, cool. Yeah, um, but we'll start with tents because yeah. that's that's the obvious place. It's more most common. Most common, yeah. People get, say I want to go camping. Mm. What I need a tent. That's that's kind of the most affordable and yeah. easiest way to get into it. Yeah. So I guess it is beginner friendly. Yeah. Um, ease of setup is probably yeah, it depends on what you buy really. I and mean, we've got little tents yeah. in front of us here, which is really easy to set up. But if you're going to go to more family tents and sort of multiple rooms and that sort mm. of thing, it gets a little bit more complex. There's a couple of different options now as well. Like, you know, going back five or so years, predominantly you would be, you, the tent options available would be dome tents, which are the ones with the fiberglass poles that sort of are on a long elastic and they connect together and you thread them through and up goes your yep, tent. They just cross in the middle. That's yeah. right. But these days they seem to be in the minority over favour of instant up style tents where they have a more heavy duty sort of steel frame or, or steel alloy frame um, with different knuckles and whatever and they're sort of engineered for someone to just step inside and pop up a hub to mm. the roof and it all locks into place. And there still might be extra additional fiberglass poles and things like that, depending if you've got vestibules or other components to it. But for the most part, they're designed to be instant up. And then you also have a fairly, I guess, new, not new in terms of sort of technology because they have been around for a while, but new in terms of the the – I guess, momentum of popularity and the more brands picking up the style is air tents or inflatable tents, which are also an instant up style, um, which can be quick and easy. So there are a couple of different options. Yeah. That instant up thing's a funny one. Like they call it instant up or, you know, um, a certain amount of seconds that the tent takes to Mm. set up. I think probably to get more to the point, there is an element of it that is instant, but then there's a extra time like it's not just pop you still need to like done. peg it and There's still pegs yeah. and if you've got hard ground you're putting pegs into then the time's going to take longer to yeah. set it up so just have a it don't be full necessarily yeah. that an instant up tents just press the button and it's going to pop and into place yeah, there's still effort you have to put into it yeah it tends to say and i think sometimes even with those um more traditional style dome tents with the fiberglass poles once you've done it a few times they can go up just as quick really Easy. especially yeah. if you've got a couple of hands on deck i think maybe the instant up ones tend to be a little bit more popular for people who are more solo camping or mm. maybe they've got a couple of little kids and they need to be able to just get get a shelter up quickly without having to muck around with poles and things like that. Mm. Um, that sort of tends to be where where the appeal for that comes in, I feel. I think so. I, I Yeah, if you, you've got three categories there, I think that fiberglass pole, the bendy poles mm-hmm. um, is a really, even the steel ones, some of them come with steel poles now, mm-hmm. It is it is kind of where tents started and it is a really reliable, simple, sturdy mm-hmm. way and quite affordable way of getting a also tent. Also really easy to fix 
and yes. keep repaired and keep maintained for a lot longer yes. because more of those instant up and inflatable ones because of the engineering that goes into them and the design of them, you can't buy off the shelf repair solutions for them like yep. you can with the fiberglass ones. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. That's a good good point there. Yep. So you're buying something that's maybe going to take a little bit longer to set up, but mm. it's more field maintainable yep. and more affordable. Yeah. Instant up, I'd say caravan park type camping and that sort of thing is yeah. really good for family camping. And that's, they come with so many accessories now or built in accessories like LED yeah. lights and extra rooms and awnings that become extra large awnings and yeah. rooms. Yeah, and you can and get like extra panels on the front of them and they can yeah. be a lot more sort of modular or expandable d- depending on the model that you get and the options yep. are they can – sometimes they can – grow with your family as well, mm. which makes them a good option for people who maybe are just starting out and they're either thinking about kids or they have young kids who might want more space that they can tend to be a bit more uh, flexible. Yeah. 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 Um, air tents are another one that you mentioned before. Yeah. That I think it's quite an exciting area and we're hoping to have a bit of a future talk with about air tents alone because yeah. I think it's a really developing space. Me too. Initially they come out and it was a little bit, everyone's kind of thinking, what, my tent's going to go flat and then what do I do? But I know, admittedly, I was a skeptic. I was yeah. a bit like, oh, it's a gimmick. I think they're stupid. But once I have seen them in action, they're really amazing. And I'm not a tent camper anymore, but if I was, I would definitely be looking at one. Yeah, easy to set up because you yeah. just pull the plugs out of it collapses down, you roll it up and mm. stick it in your car. There's no tents, no poles to break. No. In the wind, they flex in the winds yeah. um, rather than bend. So, And the they're f- often like one piece as well. Like yeah. the fly is attached sort of to the inner yep. in some point. So once it is up, all you need to do is peg it out. Yeah. And if you've got a pump, you can peg it out, plug yeah. the pump in, yeah. go and have a drink or whatever while you're <laughs> Inflates and then you just yeah. got gyps to put in. I think they're a really developing yeah, space. So, me too. Um, but the thing with tents though is you do need to then, if, if we're comparing tents to say rooftop tents and, yeah, and yeah. swags, you then need to add your bedding and everything inside. Yeah. So you've packed your tent and you've packed your bedding separately. Mm-hmm. So you pitch the tent and then you set up inside the tent, mm-hmm. but you can create quite a nice space. Yeah. I think the benefit of them though, um, I mean them and swags, but compared to something like a rooftop tent, you set up your camp and that's it. Like if you want to go exploring or look through the region or go to tourist attractions or do things like that, your car's free, your vehicle's mm-hmm. free, you can get in your car and you can go and you've still got a set up space. Yeah, I'm with you there. My, yeah. I'm moving more to not even – I'm taking the awning off my tent even yeah. because I, I want my vehicle You mean to off be your car? Off my, oh yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, you said off, off your my tent. tent. Sorry, yeah, no, awning off my car, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, because I want that vehicle to be – I can just jump in it and go for a drive or, or worry. run the kids to the toilet yeah. or whatever without – having it anchored via something that's attached to the vehicle. So yep. it's nice to have that tent separate. But a rooftop tent, there's other benefits. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always seen a rooftop tent as being really, being really beneficial, say, for a touring couple because mm-hmm. you've got room for two and the, the tent's up the top. You mm-hmm. can fold it up pretty easily and it's good for a quick stopover. You mm-hmm. stop that night, pack it up the next morning and keep going. Mm-hmm. But if you're staying somewhere for a while, then, yeah, like you mentioned, it's your, your tent's anchored to the ground because you've had yeah. to peg out the rooftop tent. But the benefits of it are obviously that setup is really quick. Your yeah. bedding's inside. Um, it's all, you know, it's waterproof. You're using your, you've got a small footprint on the ground. Mm-hmm. So you, you can almost camp anywhere. You can park your car. Yeah. Because you, you're only coming outside the side of your car a little bit yeah. with the tent. I don't use a rooftop tent. I haven't used a rooftop tent before. Mm-hmm. I can possibly see myself using it later in life when I don't have kids. Yeah. And I set the car up as such. Mm-hmm. But I don't, have you used, I've not personally used a rooftop tent. I have seen a lot of people with them and I think that um, they tend to be more so on four-wheel drives. I think, like you say, because you can sort of just set it up anywhere you can park your vehicle. Mm. Um, The only thing is they they do tend to be pretty heavy Mm. and I know we've talked before about, you know, minimalist packing and and GVMs for your vehicle and things like that and I do wonder whether or not realistically a lot of them can actually be put on roof racks or can be installed safely. Like sometimes I do see them and I'm like, whoa, I don't know if that really should be on that vehicle but they are quite popular. I I have seen actually um, recently when we went on a trip away, I thought it was really awesome. Someone had a boat trailer but their boat trailer had a big frame over it and then their rooftop tent was mounted on top of the trailer frame so their vehicle was still free for them to drive around and do whatever they wanted because it was stuck on their trailer and so that didn't actually limit their movement and then obviously it's a multi-purpose thing they're not just carrying a trailer for the sake of a rooftop tent they've got like their boat on it and things like that as well so that's possibly another option 
I reckon that's a great idea because yeah. the rooftop tent, like you said, are heavy. I mean, fifty to sixty kilos for a yeah. most two person versions. I think there's even a, there's four person versions right now. Yeah, like 80, I know 80 like kilos Darchi in, in particular, they do like a fourteen hundred, which is one point four meters wide. But then yeah. they also do a couple of other sizes all the way through to a twenty two hundred, which mm. is two point two meters wide. So for some people who might have, you know two parents and two kids, all of them will sleep up there and mm. it's big and it's there's plenty of room and it's, yeah. If you can transport that way, yep. a trailer is probably a great way to do that because then you're keeping your car, once again, for a, if you use your car around the city mm. or town or wherever you wherever you reside, um, you've got all that space free for, to use the car. That's and, another and really good your point. your trailer's set up as a camper trailer. It's not something that you top. can just sort of put on and take off. It's a lot. Once it's sort of installed, it stays there. So unit. if you, yeah, yeah, if your vehicle is one that is a daily driver, having to drive around with that on top can yeah. Yeah. impact, you know, the efficiency of using your car every day too. Yeah. You can also um, get like a, what do they call them, annex attachments where you can zip it to the base of your rooftop tent, which creates a huge big yeah. bottom story room. So you can go in there and have you set up. So there are ways to expand yeah. it and things like that. But, again, it's sort of, it's a permanent setup. Yeah, so you, it's not a – your base camp involves your car being yeah. attached to your, your, yeah, your tent, yeah. your shelter. So. Not my style of camping, especially with kids. I like mm. to have my tent separate and my car available to get around with. Mm. There's also, I, I once again, I don't have much experience with rooftop tents actually using them, but there's mm. hard top and soft top rooftop tents. I think yep. some of those hard top ones might be a little bit lighter. I'm not sure, but not they, sure they become either. really expensive. Like you're talking four or five thousand dollars for these tents, and when you can pick up a um, just a basic tent for under uh, four hundred, three four hundred dollars for a yeah. decent family tent. Mm. There's a big consideration. There definitely is a big need consideration. A real for it. Yeah. yeah. I think um, the hard top or hard shell rooftop tents are fairly recent as well. And they just, and they're even quicker and easier, I think, to set up because you're literally just opening it up. And I think it just goes up on hydraulic arms or something like that. And you just I think so. climb up and climb in. It's super easy. Yeah. We'd we'll be interested to hear some viewers' opinions on those because yeah. I'd like to know too the the wind noise on those because the hard shell kind of gives it a bit more of an aerodynamic shape. Yeah. Whereas the, the rooftop tents, we have 23-0 and Darcy mm. rooftop tents, and it is just a box on top of the roof. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking that's going to immediately add to your fuel consumption and yep. wind noise on top of your car, whereas those hard shell ones kind of, they look like they pack much flatter. Mm. So interesting to know people's Possibly opinions also on then limits the flexibility that you have for storage of other really important things. Like if you've got a rooftop tent on your roof rack, you have no other options for storing other stuff on your roof racks, yep. like your gas or, you know, any other stuff that can't mm. fit in your cabin. Yeah. I guess my roof rack is going to, it's just my tent mm. and my swag anyway, so mm. that's my... Oh, but then I've got a shovel and stuff up there too. So, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you have to rethink about how you pack your car, I suppose, if yeah. you're yeah, just taking up your roof, your roof space with the tent. And once again, the weight. Obviously, yeah. if you're putting a 50 to 60 kilo tent up there, then you probably don't want to be putting much more on your roof anyway. I'm trying heavy. to think because as sort of we're talking about rooftop tents, um, I, there's no situation that I would personally be in camping at the moment at least or for the foreseeable future where that would be a practical option for me. Mm. So I'm wondering if when you do see them, they tend to be not so much on family vehicles and things like that, more like younger people or younger couples. So I assume if you're sort of, you know, you're driving somewhere and you're doing all your exploring on the way during the day and then you're stopping and you're setting up just to sleep at night and then you're packing up the next day and then you're driving again, doing yep. other cool stuff. And then like in that particular instance, they would be handy. I think it's perfect in that situation. Yeah. yeah. Not so much family camping. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you there. Then it moves under swags, which kind of, mm. I don't know, does it cross between tents and rooftop tents? I guess ease of, it does a little bit because it, it's not, it's not attached to your car like a tent, but it sets up. In a similar manner to a rooftop sort of tent, a bit like an all-in-one. Yeah, it rolls out, and then there's mm. minimal poles and pegs to put in place, and you've mm. got yourself a shelter. But mm. it sits on the ground. I guess you could put your swag on your on your roof rack. Yeah, you could, <laughs> and then call it. A I have seen tent. people um, slipping in swags in the tray of their ute and stuff. And if yeah. you did have a platform on the top, I think actually there was a. Uh, was it um, Malcolm Douglas? I reckon when I oh, was yeah. a kid, I used to love Malcolm Douglas, yeah. and I'm pretty sure he slept in a swag on his roof racks a lot because yeah. obviously he was in croc country, so you don't yeah. want a croc coming up to eat you in the middle yeah. of the night. But yeah, so it is it is a good option to yeah. for versatility for sure. I've never slept. I don't think I've ever slept on my rooftop 
on my roof rack. Sorry, because mm. I've got a, a tray rack yeah. in my swag. But I do remember when I bought it, I thought if the grounds, I don't know, it, it's all prickles or it's just not even nice rain. to sleep on or rain or whatever. Yeah, if it's yeah. really wet, I can just put my double swag on yeah. my roof rack and sleep up there. A bit harder with kids. There's not enough room up there for kids. But, of course. Um, but just as a couple, once again, that's pretty handy. But as a family with swags, um, I reckon – Probably if you've got an older child who wants a bit of their own space, then a swag They're outside great. the family They're tent. Definitely so you can kind of great combine for that the too. Yeah. Yeah. A lot and a lot of people who call us up asking about swags are because they've got a, a teenage kid or, you know, someone who um in their family who they want to be a little bit more independent and they're starting to maybe to go camping with mates or family or whatever, and they can be really handy for that. Yep. The only thing from my experience in terms of swags um is that the ones that I got for the kids, because initially they only had swags, that was their uh-huh. option. We didn't have tents or anything like that. And they just had a hoop at the bottom end and a hoop at the top end with like a spreader bar, mm-hmm. which is the most common one. Yep. I think, you know, your dust till dawn and dome, your, dome swag. Yeah, thought, like, yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, and, but the sides sag in quite a lot. And so what I found with the kids is that they didn't, really enjoy that as much because if they were in there and they wanted to read a book at night or they wanted to be in their own space, it just felt quite claustrophobic because their sides would swear and they didn't really feel comfortable to just be in there and hang out. Yep. And I think possibly that's why the segmental swags have come out now that have like a third hoop in the middle and they can be a little bit more square and it really opens up the size, especially if you're getting a, a 1400, which is a double swag or queen size swag or whatever it's referred to across the brands or like an 1100 or a king single with those dome styles, it's just even more fabric and even more sort of space that doesn't necessarily hold shape. So I think, um, yeah, those more structured swags are a great option to look into as well. But they then obviously they do require a little bit more setup. They're a tiny bit heavier because they have a little bit more poles. Yeah, it does become a bit of a funny line that, that you cross there where you get a swag that requires that many poles and, yeah. and and pegs that you think I'm spending a lot of time setting up this swag. It's pretty bulky when I could probably get the same weather protection mm-hmm. and set up take the same setup time for a tent that is going to give me heaps more space yeah. inside. So, yeah, I don't Yeah, well, the option thing. that we have now is two small tents and mm-hmm. we have two kids in each tent and so – we found that the setup for the two small tents and chucking the bedding in is actually quicker yep. and the kids get more enjoyment out of it than the swags that we have. Yep. Um, but again, having the swags there is really handy because as I said, if they do go camping with mm-hmm. friends or they do go away with their grandparents, it's just a real quick, easy, all in one bedding yeah. solution that you can send with them and they're still happy in. Yeah. But like you said, there is a versatility of being able to use some of the styles in your tent as yeah. just a standard bed roll as well. Yep. Well, mine's, I've got actually my, do- it's a double swag. It's just an envelope mm. style swag. So it doesn't have yeah. all the holes and stuff. So inside that I have, I, my, I double, my wife and I's double mat and mm. then I put all our bedding in there and then I put the kids mats in there as well. They're all uh, self-inflating mats. Yeah. And then I roll it all up as one and that all goes inside a double swag bag on my You're roof. Right. So all the bedding's up on the roof, all protected. Yeah, by, that's awesome From weather idea. and everything. Mm. And then you set up a tent and mm. I just use like a canvas, like an Oz tent um, for, for uh, touring. Yeah. And that whole thing just goes in the tent. If it's wet, you take the swag bag off the top, all the canvas and everything goes inside, roll our mat out, it's protected. I use the yeah. swag bag for protection on the ground floor for to stop the kids' mats from, you know, yeah. less, less potential for puncture. So it all kind of goes in in one. So I, I use a combination of both. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. if I was to take four swags, mm. it would be pretty bulky. So, Definitely. But then I'd do away with my tent, but the, like probably lighter weight, but the actual – size of the swags packed yeah. up is pretty big. So you're going to have a fair bit on your roof rack and yeah. It's- swags also afford flexibility in terms of wanting, like you can use them in conjunction with stretches as well. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, there are a couple of swags that are designed to go on a stretcher, but then there you could even just fit generic swags on top of them. Mm. And so they can be great for, you know, single people or even couples who don't have a huge amount of space and they don't necessarily want to lug a tent around because tents can be heavy on it. Like swags do pack up quite large, but they tend to not be as heavy as a tent, which also has Mm. quite a lot of poles and things like that in it as well. Um, And then if you've got a stretcher as well, 
you're not necessarily on the ground. So if yeah. it's wet or cold or whatever, you, you lift it up. You don't have to sort of squat down in the ground and sort of crawl in it. So there is flexibility with that there. Mm. I think a lot of our um, customers who are getting a little bit older but still want to keep camping love That's that right. setup because they can just get up off the ground. You can sit, put your legs out the side of your bed in the morning yep. and just get your shoes and everything on. So. You, yeah, you don't have up. to worry about dodgy knees and things that's like right. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It just extends your, you know, the amount of time you can keep camping for by, yeah. by that sort of setup. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, certainly have their place. I don't think you could put your finger on and say this is the best way about it. In terms no. of swags, I will add there is something pretty special about sleeping just in a swag. There I mean, is. I like just sleeping in the open altogether, but yeah, a swag like it's just you inside a canvas sort of vessel. Yeah. There's something pretty cool about, especially in the outback, sleeping yeah. in a swag like that. But yeah, definitely. Um, I think probably given a lot of different options. I reckon yeah. if I was to summarise, I'd say tents are a good starting place. If you've never camped before, mm-hmm. then start with a basic tent. Don't, unless you're committing to saying camping's our new holiday lifestyle, yep. then don't overcommit. Buy yep. yourself a, a basic tent that's got space for all of you. And there's a lot of entry level sort of options that are yep. still really good quality. Yep, yep. And just see how you like it. See what mm-hmm. you like before you go and spend the earth on mm-hmm what everyone else says is the best tents out there because everyone's going to have their own opinions, but you've got to formulate what's best for you. Yeah. Um, the tents are probably also good for that base camp, family camping style thing. I know I've Definitely. got a double dome style sort of um, it's a flexible pole style tent, yep. but if we're going to stay somewhere for a week, mm-hmm. I'll use that because there's heaps of space inside. We can sleep with one of the kids at the other. Mm-hmm. If it's rainy and wet, you can play games inside. You can put a table yeah. inside. It gives you a bit of flexibility like that. Definitely. But if it's two rings up and down all the time, I use a more compact heavy duty tent yep. um, sets up easily and yep. gives you that durability. Uh, rooftop tents, I'd say touring couples or, yeah. or like you said, singles, younger singles, touring couples, yeah. younger people, even sort of older people, people who are sort of possibly they're going to set up for a longer time but not want to go anywhere. They're just mm. happy where they are. Maybe if, you know, you're just going on a fishing trip for a week and you're parked up next to the river, good option. Yep. If you're moving every single day and you just need a quick setup every night, excellent option. You don't have to worry about packing separate bedding and things like that. It's just pop it open and it's all there ready to yeah. go. Um, there is flexibility with them as well with the annex. So yeah. there is a little bit of options but not ideal if if you do want the freedom to be able to use your vehicle. Yeah. And a swag kind of crosses the two then. If we talk about yep. that ease of setup, the swag gives you that affordable option to have that quick setup. So you're, yep. you're on the move every night, mm-hmm. um, but you're you're stopping, you want to set up camp quickly. You can, I mean, you could sit on your swag around the campfire and then yeah. when you're ready to go to bed, just roll it out and crawl into it, yeah. roll it back up and put it back on the roof rack the next day. You've still got your roof rack free. Yep. You haven't got a rooftop tent up mm-hmm. there. Um, and it's it's affordable and reasonably lightweight to, to cart around. So Yeah, and there yeah. are there is flexibility with them as well for people who are like motorbike tourists and things like that. You can yep. get small biker swags. They're a great option if you've got teenage kids or kids that want their own independent space without having to worry about a whole nother mm. a tent and things like that. Um yep. yeah, they they're they're a good option for versatility and flexibility without having to invest in a whole nother. Yeah shelter system. I think some brands even brought out a synthetic version of swag so that they it's basically like a extra large bivy bag, I suppose. Oh, yeah, so they, they have it's made yeah. of synthetic material. So it packs mm. up really small. Um, but it has the poles in it. So great for yeah, bike uh, motorbike touring where mm. you, you maybe you would use a hiking tent um potentially, but yeah. a swag gives you maybe a different sort of versatility that you're after, a bit more space inside maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think we've summarized it pretty yeah, well. I don't know probably. if that was Hopefully that was useful for our listeners to try and work out which way around they want to go. Yeah. But a if combination you, If of you've got good. further questions, definitely jump on and ask them. We'll be happy to get them all covered. Yeah. Uh, if, as Ben mentioned earlier in the show, don't forget to subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast. Also on YouTube, jump into our Facebook group uh, after you've listened to us and, yeah, chuck us your questions, give us any uh, comments you've got or ask for advice from one another as well. And also don't forget to check out Snowy dot com dot au for all your tent rooftop tent and Swags. swag needs yeah cool. thanks so much for joining us again folks thanks we'll see you next time bye